Hello, welcome back to the studio. My name is Sharon Hurst and I paint in watercolour. Pencil, silk, do a bit of beaded jewellery, a bit of everything really. But today's tutorial is going to be about blending. Oh, now that's a tricky little devil, isn't it? How on earth do you get those lovely soft transitions through from dark to light with no discernible edge? Not easy, not easy. When you're trying to paint beautiful hillsides, with soft edges, feather the clouds, when you're trying to paint skin tones like this behind me here, fabric, and you want it to be smooth and gentle and soft, how do we achieve it? Well, I hope that this little bit of video will help you through that problem. The first thing I do need to stress, for me personally, I can't do it unless I have my very favourite number eight sable brush. It doesn't have to be an expensive sable brush. This isn't. It's a rosemary's brush, so they're excellent quality. Rosemary and Co, they're fabulous. They're handmade and they're made by a lady and her daughter and they are just such good value for money. But the point is, sable holds a lot of water. If I tried this technique myself with a synthetic brush, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's no good. I turn into a bumbling amateur and I can't do it. So for me, I've taught myself this technique with this brush, good brush. Please join me and let me prove to you that it's not as difficult as you would like to think it is. It's purely and simply a knack and it all comes down to how wet or how dry this is and it's control and it's your control and if you can learn this I promise you you've got watercolour. It all comes down to the amount of water and moisture. Enjoy, let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear your stories afterwards. There is no doubt whatsoever that blending can be tiresomely difficult and it is a technique that um, we need to really manhandle and get a grip with it because it's so quintessentially important to anything that you do with watercolour. Your paint needs to be probably single cream thickness. You don't want your paint too thin, you don't want it too thick because it won't move. And we're talking about having a little puddle of water of paint and I want to run that across the paper like so. I need to rinse. I'm going to dab the drip off my brush. So rinse, dab, and then come in and pass the brush along underneath. Get rid of the pigment again, rinse, dab, and then come back and pass it across. Rinse, dab, and come through. And hopefully that should give you a nice soft blend. A nice soft blend. Just coming down a little bit. If you take colour, let's go for this so that you can see. If we take colour and we lay it down on the paper and then we rinse and we dab and we start to pull out like it makes such a mess. Don't do it. Rinse it, dab it, stroke it. Get rid of the pigment, get rid of the drip, and stroke it. Get rid of the pigment, get rid of the drip, and stroke it. And that should give you a nice soft blend. If we put paint down, and we stop, and we talk to somebody, and we don't get to it quickly enough, that's going to dry, and if you allow that to dry, as soon as it's dried, you'll land up with a mark that you can't move. It'll give you a hard edge, like 
can work that a bit more. I should be all right with that now, that's fine. And don't dab it and don't fluffy brush it. The biggest problem with this is that has dried on that edge and I can see already, we'll wait a little bit and you will see in a minute, let me come closer. You'll see that the water in here is riding up into the drying paint and I know for a fact that line will cauliflower. So this is your problem. If you are thinking about going into that and um, putting too much water in it, so again let me put a line down and we go in with too much water. So I'm not going to get rid of the drip on my cloth. I'm going to come straight into it and it floods it, absolutely flooded it and I've got no control, it's going to run down into this and it's going to run up into this and it, this is drying and it will give me a problem. So the reason why I always, always rinse and it's just a case of that and then back to the work. So I can come back, rinse, one dab and then back. So don't come into my cloth and do all this. That's too dry now. That will wick paint out. Hopeless. So you rinse and do this. And the reason what you just imagine that you're in a hospital is hygiene. Every time you come back to the work, you've got to rinse and dab so that you get keep that lovely clean brush. Don't fluffy brush it. So again, if we're going to put a line down. Right, so you can see it. Don't come in and do this because the more you do that, the more brush stro strokes you have and the more it will run and the more it will work. So don't do it. Rinse and dab and then come in and just gently stroke it. You're going to say, hello paint, my name's Brush and I'm going to stroke you. Look at that. Hello paint, my name's Brush and I'm going to love you, look at that. And that's what you're aiming for, that beautiful stroking motion. If you come back along the line, bear in mind, you've got, well, let's do it. So I'm going into the, this is Payne's Grey, let's do that again. So if I come along with Payne's Grey, so I'm going to rinse and I'll dab and I'll just swipe it along swipe it along and then if I swipe back my brush has got paint on it and all I'm doing is moving it so keep it clean there you go better there we are so nice and clean lots of hygiene so clean all it every single time clean it bring it back get rid of the drip because when I've cleaned my brush even although I am wiping it on the side of the bowl when I come back into this, where am I? Let me mirror it. Oh, it is difficult, isn't it? All of that water is on my brush. I don't want that on the paint, do I? So I'm going to rinse, and if I come in, all of that is in the brush. All of that. Come out a little bit, Sharon. See, there you go. So cleanly, cleanliness and manipulation, this is up to you. So let's see that in action properly. Get rid of that. I'm going to move this and I'm bringing another picture in. Let's come out. I'm swapping that for this. So watch out, we've got boob alert here, but the only way to show you this is with the skin that I enjoy painting to get the smoothness here. I'm going to use my cloth and I have my, my brush and I have mixed up 
this is very, very dark paint here. I'll put some on her hair so that you can see. This is my basic skin colour, as dark as that is. As dark as it is, and it's quite thick. But what I've done is I have mixed up a well, a reservoir of colour, and then I emptied my brush like this, and I put it in the palette next door, and I added a shed load of water. I mean, literally, so that it's thin, thin, thin paint. I'm talking about that kind of thin now. Thin, thin paint. Because we're going to lay this colour on top of this colour and this is how we'll get our, our blending and our shading. I will fill my brush and I've got to remember I mustn't paint too far because if I draw the line, paint the line too long, I can't get back into it and blend it quickly enough before it dries and then I've got a hard line. So do it in small snatches. You can always go back and join the snatches up. So here we go. I would come into here and I would lay that along through there. I'm going to try to go up to her neck. So I'm rinsing, I'm going to dab and I'm going to run that up through there. So that's the line that keeps it wet. Rinse and dab and then this is the one that helps to blend. And I'm going to rinse and dab and come back down and do that again. And that gives me my blend line. Come in so that you can have a little look at that. Okay. You must come in to the side that you're blending. So this side, I'm just going to turn it because otherwise that would be excruciatingly difficult for me to paint. And I want to load my brush and this time in from the neck, down and round the hair. And I'm going to go to about there. So I rinse and I dab and again I come in and I take it through once, rinse and dab, twice, I'm going to do this again, rinse and dab, and again, there you go. Right, so we've got that. You have to go in politely to meet the paint. Don't pull the paint out. Go in and meet it politely. If I bring this down through here, I'm not going to touch that because it's wet, so I shall start here, down, rinse and dab and just blend. All I have underneath here, the colour paint that you're looking at, is the same mix that I'm using now, but it's even thinner. So I've put that on all over as a wash and I've allowed that to dry until it's bone dry and now I'm going in and laying another coat on top. I would need shadow under her arm. So I load up and I'm going to come in down there like that. Rinse and dab and come in once so that's to keep it wet. Rinse and dab and come in twice to start the real blend and I rinse and I dab and I come back for a third run to do that. And that gives me that line. It's smooth and it's easy to run. It's good. Now I'm coming round her shoulder. So this time in. Can you see me? Yes, you can. So in and round like that. Rinse and dab. And I come through. You've got this beautiful brush, this lovely tool. Use the whole brush. Look, stroke it. Just stroke it. There we are. And a more difficult blend up round here. We need two lots. Let me come out of it so that you can see where I'm going. I don't want to, I can afford to come in a little more, can't I? That's it. So up round here, I would need where one edge meets another edge, the shadow in the corner will do that. And then that will come up through there. So again, stroke it, rinse, dab and stroke. And you get a rhythm going, rinse, dab, stroke. Okay. 
And this is how I would work my way around all the edges of my girl. When you get to something difficult and dodgy like this, my word, that's tricky, that's tricky. This is that gorgeous little cleft in the middle of her neck. So there I would come in, I'm going to put darkness in there. And I've got to be quick because I've got to rinse and dab and pull that line up, rinse and dab. And this time I have to come in on this side and then rinse and dab. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to just snuggle to smooth that. Come in and just snuggle it. And you have to let everything, everything dry before you go back in to start to manipulate anything else. If I come anywhere near any of this that's wet, it will just bleed like mad. It will make such a mess and I would be a very, very unhappy bunny. If it's easier for you because you're concerned about touching edges and you don't want to go near them, that's easy too because you just, you just all you have to do is mask this out if you'd like to. If that would make your life easier, you can do that. But I'm going to come up round there round like that, rinse and dab and stroke it, rinse and dab and stroke it and pull it. Remember on a hot day when the sun is shining and you're all rather warm, this is going to dry quick, more quickly and you've got to bear that in mind. The other thing that catches me out always is a hairdryer. I find that um, if I'm using a hairdryer, it heats the paper. And then, of course, the issue with that is that um, I, I come in and start painting and the paper is hot and it dries, dries it more quickly. So that's quite scary. We've got shoulder blades, collarbones here. Shoulder blades, gosh, that's a bit bad anatomy, isn't it? And you get this shadow that's under here. So again, I rinse and dab, and I've got to come into this side and soften that. And rinse and dab, and just do so. Say to yourself, rinse and dab, and then you're coming in and you're smudging it, nudging it, and you're budging it. This well known firm of solicitors snudge it, nudge it, and budge it. So then you'd have that there, rinse. Pull it, rinse and dab. Always, always come in and just give your cloth. I've got it on my lap. Sometimes I land up with a very wet lap. But hey ho. So gently, gently work it slowly, slowly so that you can work your way around your picture. When you want to come back and you're needing to join up these lines, that's, that's okay. So here's my paint again. I'm coming at it from the other direction. We're double glazing over here. Double glazing, triple glazing. Because this is coat one, that's coat two, and I'm now going to put coat three over the whole lot. And I get to the bit I've done, and I, I just lift off. And then when I come back, and I do that, rinse it, dab it, and I come back, and I do that. I've, it's even darker down here because you've glazed that three times now and you've got a decent join there that isn't going to shame anybody. Come in here. It's easier to turn your work round because I, I like to go in underneath to blend. I find it most cack-handed to come into the top to do this. So if you, if you do it this way, you'll find that it's much easier. So this one, oopsie doop, throwing my brush around, get a hold of it. There's that strange little knobby bit there that I don't like. I've got this lumpy bit here. So don't pull it out, come into it, get a hold of it and pull it back. That's it. If you've got areas that are messy and dirty and you feel that they're, they're not clean blends, don't worry about that either because you can go into it and you can blend it out with a nice soft brush. And I use 
Let me bring the pin picture out again. If I want to do that, I use a big brush like this, big soft brush. This is a dead brush, really. It's no good for painting. It's number 11. And if you come in with that and you rinse it, and you need it to be not too wet, so dab. It needs to leave a snail trail on your hand, just. So rinse it, dab it. And if you have areas in your work where you think that it's a bit sketchy and you don't like the, the blending, don't do it when it's wet. Wait until it's dried and then go into it now. And with this damp brush, you can, this is Bockingford. I can come in here and with my brush, I can blend. And it will let me be quite rough with it. Not too wet. And you take off probably 10 to 20% of the paint. It leaves you with the, I'm going to bring you in again. So hang on. It leaves you with this kind of effect. I've literally taken the colour off the tops of the paper, off the top of the hills on the paper, and as a consequence, those white areas here that you're looking at look like skin pores. This is why I like a rough paper, and it makes it look as though it's skin pores, and I find that really, really very useful when I'm painting skin. If I don't like these kind of blends, I can rinse, and I can dab, and I can come in if it's too dark, and I can soften the whole thing up like that. That's a very, very, very useful technique. You can see it even more clearly, perhaps, if I were to do it with this dark that I painted here, this area. I'm going to bring you in again. And if I rinse my dab and I come in, I soften that you can see it takes quite a bit of the colour out but actually it's softened it all you've now got lift on the tops of the lumps of the paper and as a consequence it gives you a really interesting texture which will look like skin pores on skin okay again it's quite a good idea to know your paints and to know your paper because this would be grief if you were trying this on something maybe like Osh. It's a paper that is very, very absorbent and um, it doesn't like some paints. You'll find that they go into the grain of the, the cotton and it won't let it out again. The, the, this blending and lifting is quite useful. Again, I want to bring you in here. I've brought you in close here under her eyes. Where I've got the blue under her eyes, I want to come in with this little brush here. This is a half inch flat brush. And when I come in, this is dry paint. I'm able to blend that, keep it clean. I'm able to blend that and soften all of those lines so that I don't have the harshness there anymore. But it's quite important to know your paints and know what you can use and what doesn't stain, because if that was something like alizarin crimson around the lips, ooh, it might be a different story. Oh, I don't know, I'm going to get away with it there, just about. <laughs> just about. So all these little tips for blending, they're quite useful. Um, we find that we each have our own different ways of dealing with our problems, but this is my way that I have discovered I can blend and I use it for everything. I use it for fabric and for folds in hills, 
for skin like this, I will use it for hair. And I thought that maybe one of our little demonstrations later on, I'm going to paint you the hair on one of these girls and I'll show you how all of this applies to that. Bye for now.